My next question is from Lance, who wants to know whether a classic film deserves its status as one of the all-time greats. I like Citizen Kane as much as the next guy, but I don't think of it as a classic. It's a good history of the newspaper industry, but there are movies in that period of time that were more worthy as classics. Even Orson Welles said this. Why is it seen as the greatest movie of all time? Like he said, Citizen Kane is often anointed as the greatest film of all time. The American Film Institute named it as such, twice, and Sight and Sound also had it as its number one pick for many decades. But what is it about Citizen Kane that makes it revered so much? For the record, I agree with the critical consensus that Citizen Kane is a brilliant piece of cinema and deserves its place as one of the best films ever made. The main thing Citizen Kane does superbly well is its structure. The film largely avoids the usual three-act structure in depicting the life of newspaper tycoon Charles Foster Kane. Orson Welles and Herman J. Mankiewicz having the story told through people who knew the man allows the film to play around with perspective. Leyland, the theatrical critic, knew him differently than Mr. Thatcher, the banker who raised him, who had a different relationship than the one with his second wife, Susan Alexander. And yet, there is a common theme of a man who started out of certain aspirations and relations which were changed by his eventual greed for more. Credit should also be given to editor Robert Wise, as these passages are so involving we forget we're essentially watching flashbacks. Almost the entire film is told through flashbacks, each successfully telling a different part of Kane's life, and all for the pursuit of finding out what Rosebud means. Lance mentioned its depiction of the newspaper industry, and the movie does serve as a clever satire on that industry as well as the power of media. Kane sees his newspapers as a tool to manipulate the public to his way of thinking, rather than merely as a way to present the news. Citizen Kane has often been connected to William Randolph Hearst, and how he used the press for his own gain, including making sure Citizen Kane was unknown to his readers. Wells did use other sources for Charles Foster Kane, and in fact, many of the more overt references to Hearst included by Mankiewicz in his drafts were later removed by Wells. However, Hearst certainly was not the last media magnate who used his power to form public opinion. The Australian tycoon Rupert Murdoch, founder and owner of News Corp, has been accused of doing this. British filmmaker Simon Hartog even made a documentary titled Beyond Citizen Kane, about a Brazilian media mogul and the head of the global television network infamous for its news coverage of Brazilian politics. So there's definitely a timeliness to the Charles Foster Kane persona. While Kane is a richly developed character, Orson Welles also gives a fantastic performance, believably playing the mogul through the years. Maurice Seidemann, who was uncredited due to union rules, did a phenomenal job of the aging makeup, and Wells more than does the job of portraying Kane both in his 20s and near the end of his life, and he ultimately becomes a larger-than-life personality. One of the best sequences is the breakfast montage, where we see 20 years flash by in a couple of minutes. In those two minutes, so much character development is conveyed, and it's easy to understand why Kane's first marriage lost its initial magic. Citizen Kane is also masterful on a technical level. Much has been said about Greg Toland's cinematography. Toland said he wanted to work with Wells on Citizen Kane because a first-time director is more open to breaking the rules of what the camera can do. And boy do they ever! Watching the film so many decades after its release, the shots they accomplish are still stunning, especially the use of deep focus. One of my favorites is right after Kane's campaign loss, and we are looking up at him and Leyland in the newspaper office. The cinematography, along with the production design, also helps give Kane's castle, Xanadu, that extra haunting quality. So important was Tolan to the creative process, Wells even put him on the same credit as himself. Then there's Bernard Herrmann's score, which could be moody, but also playful when the scene called for it. Finally, I have to commend the pacing. While Citizen Kane runs two hours, every time I finish watching the film, it feels like I've only been sitting there for half an hour. The film is that tight and well constructed. So yes, like a lot of critics, I think Citizen Kane is a brilliant and flawless motion picture and a landmark of cinema. Let me know in the comments what you think of the movie, and thank you Lance for getting me to talk about it.